I'm Zach Martin. This is the Big Fat American Rock Show. We're with Larry Stadnicki, and he is with the High Plains Drifters. Now, we were first introduced to Larry a few months ago. I got to tell you, uh, based on your bio, and you can tell everybody a little bit about yourself uh, to reintroduce yourself to the audience. You're a really interesting guy. I, I look at you as an intellect, but you're a crazy intellect. You have a great sense of humor. Uh, I don't know what made you decide to go into music with your background. Uh, so that's a little, did any of your friends ever go, Larry, what, what are you doing? What, what's, what's, what's up uh, with you? I think that most of my friends were flabbergasted to, <laughs> to, given my, given my background and, right. and do for a living and everything else. I think it's fair to say most of my friends were stunned and completely taken aback by my pursuit of music. I had been entirely silent for roughly the first 15 or 16 years that I was becoming a songwriter. I didn't tell a soul because it sounded crazy even to me that songs were writing themselves in my head. I have no, I'm not a musician. I work with phenomenal musicians, thank God, but I am not, I can't play an instrument, but I can hear music in my head. And I can translate that uh, to a group of guys as talented as the ones I work with. So somewhere around the middle of high school, songs started writing themselves in my head. And I just didn't tell a soul. I didn't tell my family. I didn't tell any of the several women I arguably was in love with between that age and you know when I finally wised up and got married. Um, I just didn't tell anyone because it sounded nuts. Uh, plus, it... it <laughs> I think any artist, and I always have trouble calling myself an artist, but I, but I guess I am. Any artist goes through a period where they they doubt whether what they're doing is any good, right? Like, you know, what is this stuff rattling around up here, and is it any good? And eventually, I just decided, you know, it's a, life is short. If I don't do this, it's going to be one of those legendary great deathbed regrets, you know, like, why didn't I go record some songs or you know, depending on who you are, why didn't I write my great novel? Why didn't I write the screenplay, make the movie, whatever it is. At some point, you've got to pull the trigger on that if you have a creative bone in your body yeah. or, or you're going to hate yourself. I think, the, you know, I kick myself for not pulling the trigger sooner on a lot of projects. Do you of think course. that you yeah, know, always. kind of regret not starting sooner? I, I, I do and I don't. Uh, you know, I, I've, been a, I've been a music industry lawyer, among other things, in my career. Uh, and I'm, I'm aware enough of how the inner, even before I was a music lawyer, you're, you're aware of the fact that there's only a tiny fraction of people at the top of each of the fields of entertainment, whether it's film or television or music or whatever it is, only a fraction who are making a decent living uh, working full time at that. And I, I don't come from money. I watched my parents struggle all the time to do the right thing and put five kids first through uh, Catholic elementary and high schools and then private colleges. And yeah, you know, that, that you're always broke paying for that many kids with those kind of schools. And I frankly was not as horrible as this will sound to people in the music industry. I was not willing to be a starving artist. I, I knew that I had uh, options available to me that weren't available to other people because I I I worked hard I tested well I I knew that I could go to and I did go to great schools and I I, I pushed out wussed out took the easier path and, and you know became a corporate tool wearing a suit and being a lawyer for a while I have to disagree with that. You went to Harvard and you become a lawyer and you've helped a lot of people through their lives in, in meaningful ways. Art in itself is, uh, I would say art, you know, you, you, you're on a logical uh, expedition and you have to be able to be creative using the laws that are in place. I'm not saying it, you know, the typical, like, let's look, look for a loophole thing, but you really do have to be innovative and strategize. So much like law, that could be applied to music. Now, for me, there's probably things you don't know or most people don't know about me. I've got two masters, an MBA. I have a PhD in theology, right? We, we talked about this. We did, I, yeah. yeah. I'm in ministry. I'm a, a Russian Orthodox priest. I dabble in Russian. It's really difficult to master. 
but I also am really good with sciences. And uh, one of the things that I've been working on is sort of like quantum physics realm. So you can't judge a book by their covers, number one. And you don't know what people are capable of until you give them the opportunity. And, you know, I think what you're doing, and, and this is like a free coaching session for Larry. Thank you're, you. You're using God's gifts that he gave to you to the best of your ability. And we don't know how much time we have in this planet. You can be Jimi Hendrix and die at the age of 27, or you can be Jimi Hendrix and what if and live to 103. We just don't know, but you got to make the most of it. And I, I got to say that I really respect your decision to use some of your time and talents and money to put together the high plane drifters. It's great music. You uh, go through the, the different genres when you listen to it sonically. I like some of your videos that you can find on high-planes-drifters.com, including Jennifer Ast An Aniston. Jen the, Jennifer just, Ani the Jennifer Aniston video I, right, is a phenomenal just, video. It's a phenomenal yeah. video, and I'm sure it's got millions of views. But I just want to know, how did Miss, Mrs. Uh, Stadicki let you get away with it? It it started pretty simply, um, <laughs> and then it's, and then it snowballed as these yes. things often do. Yeah. Uh, I got together with, with the first three of us who got together to to record were myself, uh, my and my brilliant partners John Makem, who's one of our guitarists and sometimes has been the lead singer, and Charles Arnecki. Uh, a musical geni genius since childhood, you know, child prodigy on piano. Um, I sat down with those guys and said to them, and again, I, I had never shared this with either of them either. I said, uh, I've been a songwriter all my life. I know I've known you guys for a long time. I've never shared this with you, but I have this one Christmas tune in my head that I want to get recorded. And it's just the one, and I want to get it out there. Uh, because we still had all these troops overseas and the lyrics of the song. This is on our debut album, not the one we just put out this Christmas, but on the debut album is the song, Get Me Home by Christmas Eve. And the song that I envisioned and the way I ultimately wrote the lyrics, it speaks to a guy trying to get home from, you know, far abroad, trying to make it home to his family by Christmas Eve. He could be in the military or he could not the song's a little more universal than just speaking to a soldier trying to get home and i said help me get this done and they said sure and i said to my wife we're just going to do the one song and then i added the caveat i said unless it gets on the radio and then we might keep recording and that's what happened the song got radio play it was the first song that ever produced any royalties for me not a lot but enough for me to sit back and go heck i I'm a royalty earning songwriter. Maybe this isn't as bogus as I've thought it was all these years. And so I basically said to my wife, Lydia, I said, well, you're screwed now. I'm going to keep making music, you know? And yeah, but the video in particular, the Jennifer Aniston. The Jennifer Aniston video. You know, I always told her, even when we were dating, I would say to her, I would say to her, you know, there's only one girl you really have to fear. And that's Jennifer Aniston. You don't have to fear. <laughs> You don't have to fear. And then, and then, boys and girls, he woke up having to put a stake on his yeah. eye. Yeah, it's like you don't have to fear the ex-girlfriends, no matter what you might hear about any of them. But, but Jennifer Aniston, about as good looking as a girl's going to get, phenomenally talented. I'm a huge fan of her. Having just during COVID, uh, and with a daughter who's about who had just become a teenager, we decided to binge watch Friends starting back in March when we got locked in. Oh, okay. And so I've I've rewatched. All of Friends. I've seen a bunch of her, a bunch of her movies. I I think she's a phenomenally talented comedic actress. And I said I said that's the only girl you have to worry about. And so the the song and the video, the video especially, they're about being obsessed with someone. And I'm not I'm not obsessed with Jennifer Aniston. I I admire her. I respect her. She's a knockout. Um, don't know if she's seen the video. People always ask, has she seen the video? Has she who the hell knows if she's seen the video? That wasn't the point. The point was to write a song and then find a guy to do the video who got the concept that this is about obsession. A lot of great songs are about guys obsessed with girls and girls obsessed with guys. And we tried to put a little bit of a different spin on it, both in, in that song lyrically and in the video. Well, we won't mention anything else. If you want to see the video for yourself, go to High Plains Drifters, just like I did, where you see the uh, hyphenated, hyphenated right. drifterscom 
and uh, you can go discover it for yourself, much like I did today. And I was like, uh-oh. Was that your first viewing of the video? Yes. It's great. It was. Oh, it, it, it's a little creepy. A little like. Uh, yeah. Well, a little creepy. Yeah. But quirky, but quirky at the end, quirky and funny and, and just wonderful. Well, yeah. let's talk about your new album that is coming out right now. Uh, I have my cheat notes in front of me. Let me. Yeah, go ahead. Go. Go the ahead. forthcoming collection is the follow-up to the band's debut self-titled album, The High Plains Drifters. This first offering conceptualizes a listening experience of a sonic road trip across the country where your radio station of choice automatically tunes into different music genres as you travel. Oh, that's a great idea. That, that was the debut album, right? Right. Well, listen, I, I, you know, I'm doing the best I can with what yeah. I got over here. Yeah. You know, I'm, 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 I'm going through all the notes. This is why. I, oh, here it is at the top. Why do I start at the bottom? I, I'm going to tell you, what, you know, in a weird way. Well, I'll tell you what I do. When I get the newspaper, when I used to get the newspaper, I start in the back with the sports section and move forward. See, and I, I would always start with the film, movie, and television reviews. Well, see, to each his own. De gustibus non est dispentandum. I mean, you want to talk Latin here. That's it. Yeah. So you got your, uh, here's the second one. All right, I'll tell you. Instead of me trying to figure out what's written here, I know that you have, since you've been gone is the latest single, single correct. correct? Okay. It came, out, we got came out a week and a half ago. So you do the, the on this one, you actually do the vocals. And the backing I, vocals. I well, I did the vocals on two thirds of the songs on the debut album after my after the guy that produced the first half of that record, Charles Zarnecki, forced me to start singing my own material. I had no intention of singing until Charles forced me to sing a song called "Summer Girl," which I did adequately. Uh, we, I, I had a chance encounter with a professional. Vocal coach who said to me after listening to Summer Girl, she said, you can sing. You just don't know how. I said, I know I don't know how. That's why I haven't been singing on this first record. I spent six months with her and I've been singing everything since. Uh, I'm not the only backup vocalist on Since You've Been Gone. Uh, in fact, I'm not, on the, I'm not on the backup vocals at all on Since You've Been Gone. I do lead vocals only. And John Makem and Mike DeCampo are doing the backup vocals on that, our two guitarists. In all fairness, it's really hard for me to keep up with you. You're always moving at a million miles an hour. So, you know, yeah. I didn't know who was doing what. I just knew that you were doing something. And that's a good thing. Yeah. Now, as, far, as far as singing, Larry, uh, I think that any of us, if we practice hard enough and just try, can sing. Have you seen and have you heard some of the people that are in major rock bands, when you listen to them, like, Man, this guy cannot sing. He's a performer. Or she can't sing. It's awful. I mean, so, I mean, I don't. I'm not going to mention any by names, but but some of the great songs in rock history are by guys who could barely sing. Uh, right. Lou Reed songs, or um, some of John Hyatt's songs. I mean, those guys are not great. They're not Sinatra. They're not Ella Fitzgerald. No. But they are. Their their voices work with their songs, and and what they did was perfect. When you when you talk about the voices working with the songs, the first one that comes to mind is Bruce Springsteen because he wrote his songs so that when he gets old enough, he can sing them in an old folks' home. Maybe we're uh, that's, 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 you know? that's that's very unkind to one of Rock's great songwriters. But I, I not, but that's cool. I, I mean, totally get the point. He's thinking ahead now. When you know, four o'clock bingo before everybody plays bingo, and just before dinner, he can get up and do a couple of songs. Maybe I was born to run. I mean. And makes it easy for us guys who want to do the uh, karaoke in the same old folks home to sing along as well at the old uh, actor's home in Englewood, New Jersey. I think it's great. Yeah, he, he clearly planned well. Yes, he did plan well. Yeah. See, you understand that you get the logic. of planning. I, I, It's funny. I, I listen to guys like Bruce as they get older, uh, Sinatra as he got older, uh, McCartney as he gets older. And and you sit back and you if you're a singer, you say to yourself, you know, is my voice going to go? You know, uh, Bruce's voice hasn't gone anywhere, but, you know, Sinatra's voice faded towards the end, whereas Tony Bennett's hasn't. I saw Bennett a few years ago. The yeah. guy still belted out. Uh, Dionne Warwick, I saw at age 70. Uh, Petula Clark, I saw at age 79. Let me, they let me, sounded like they hadn't lost a step. Petula Clark, uh, right before, maybe a year before the pandemic, came over to my studios mm -hmm. and um, very few rock and roll disc jockeys or radio personalities wanted to interview her. That's she crazy. Was, I'm she, like, what are you, stupid? Phenomenal. So I had her come in, and, and you ready for a little Petula Clark talk? When was the last time that this happened? Absolutely. Go ahead. The song Downtown, 
don't mm-hmm. know how many people are aware of this, but the guitarist on it is Jimmy Page. Really? I didn't they're, know that. They're best friends. Jimmy Page, Petula Clark. That's best fun. friends. It's great. So there's that. Then when she's up in Montreal, when the bedding is taking place with John Lennon and Yoko Ono, she's uh, performing in some of the area clubs. And you have to sing in French. You have to sing in English. And no matter what she did, somebody wasn't happy with the result, right? So she knew that they were staying in Montreal. I don't think she really paid attention to the whole bed and thing. So she gets to the front counter. She goes up to see John. She talks to him. The next thing you know, she ends up one of the vocalists on all we are saying is give peace a chance. I didn't know she was on that. That's great. She's on that. So my whole thing is don't judge a book by its covers. Be willing to explore and see what connections you have musically, perhaps, or as human beings, and just let her come in. And then if you tell a good enough story, you can play on a rock station downtown by Petula Clark. And she's a marvelous lady in her mid eighties at the time. This is a couple of years ago mm-hmm. and still going on a tour, maybe 20, 20 I dates. Saw, I saw her at Feinstein's at, at the Regency in Manhattan when she was 79. I was seated right by the edge of the stage. At one point I was maybe four or five feet from her when, when she sat down at, at a piano and her voice was incredible. I mean, she yeah. had the step. Another uh, rock vocalist who I think hasn't lost uh, anything over the years, only gets better, is um, uh, Paul Rogers of Bad Company. Mm. He's, he's now, a, I know he's, I know the band, but I'm I couldn't. I mean, I can't hear know. his voice in my head. Yeah, Bad Company. No, I know the song. I know no, the song. No. Well, anyway, his voice I think is spectacular. He, I think that he is Bad Company. By the way, belongs in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Larry. So do the High Plains Drifters. No, nah, we're. A, I, won't even, up, I won't even. I won't even qualify until I'm dead. It's like you have to be, you know, 25 years after your first album comes out. Let, let me just say this: that um, if you're not nice to me while I'm alive, don't have anything nice to say to me when I'm dead. Number one. Number two, if I'm not in a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, well, actually, there's. I'm in one of the exhibits, but if I'm not in the Hall of Fame, any Hall of Fame, while I'm alive to enjoy it, don't pull that posthumous crap. I don't want to be in your Hall of Fame. Yeah, that's I'm going on record. I'm letting everybody know, right. Larry. All so right. talk about the personnel on this new album. What's the name of the album this, and the other cuts and the personnel? We haven't we haven't named the album yet. Although I'm, I've been tempted to call it "Girls Who Dumped Us." Um, <laughs> you know, you you. you but just... I I probably won't. But no, um, I like it. Go with the first inclination. Most of most of I I've said to people and this is maybe in one of the bios you know this is an album about relationships and love found and love lost and it's a lot of the songs were inspired by various women or in some cases hypothetical women in my past not not all of these songs are pegged to anything real that actually happened but a few of them are since you've been gone the first single is pegged to an actual breakup okay Um, i would call it dump just call the album Dump. Dump. It fits in with you guys. Um, dump. Anyway, for now, for now, characters dump. for now, it's untitled. Okay. The, the, the cool thing about the, the lineup, this is the lineup that gelled at the end of our debut album. We went okay. through the rhythm section switched from the first half of album one to the second half of album one because the, the guys we started playing with were professional Broadway musicians. They were in the Jersey Boys band and were only available to record when Broadway, back then, Broadway was only dark on Mondays, and now it's permanently dark. So they're brilliant guys, phenomenal musicians, but not available to us other than one day a week. By the end of the second record, we had discovered that our engineer, Kyle Cassell, was a phenomenal drummer, and we knew that, but I, I asked Kyle to replace the drum tracks on what became the first single off the debut album called Virginia. I wanted something that was a little more rock and up tempo, even though the song is an Americana tune. And he did, and he's been drumming for us ever since. And Kyle pulled in uh, one of his favorite bass players, a guy named Dave Richards. So we've, since the last few songs of album one, we've had a, a stable lineup. And we also discovered at the end of album one, uh, our producer, the guy that produced the second half of that record is producing album two. Greg Cohen said, let's put everybody in the studio same day, everybody tracking simultaneously in the isolation booths, not, not bringing in 
a musician at a time and laying down the drum track and then bringing in the guy to do the, the bass track. Yeah. And the results that we got with everybody sitting in the room together, playing and recording were phenomenal. I mean, it, it was super efficient. Uh, the guys, you know, play off each other. And so when we started album two, we decided that everyone would record the way you see it when you see the, the films of guys like the Beatles and the stones in the studio, yeah. they're all there together. Right. Yeah. So, so we've been, we've been taking that old school approach and I think you could hear it uh, on the, the first song you heard the, the Santa bring my girlfriend back. And then the, the album version of since you've been gone, which you, I don't think you've heard because it's the, I, album. I actually, I actually did listen to it and it's got a, um, I could be wrong, but more of an electronic kind of pop sound. The, to the it. single, the single has the more pop electronic sound. The album version of "Since You've Been Gone" is m more an, an Eagles inspired ballad. Oh, okay, so we're um, gonna have to we're gonna have to check that out. Okay. Check that out. Uh, it, it's a, it's a beautiful ballad, but uh, I had always I had always heard "Since You've Been Gone" in my head as more up tempo than a ballad. And when we first recorded, we recorded on the same day that we recorded Santa Bring My Girlfriend Back. And Greg Cohen, our producer, had said to me earlier last summer, he goes, I want to try it as a ballad. And I was like, I trust you, let's do it. Uh -huh. And it's a it's a great ballad. But then we sat back and reevaluated and said, okay, but is it is it a is it a great first single? And the answer was it would be if this were 1975, uh, but we probably want something a little more up tempo and current. So we, you know, largely Greg uh, uh, rejiggered it, and uh, you have the more pop version that you hear now. Well, that's wonderful. Um, now, I was just thinking about songs that have sort of that same history, and one that came to mind was Born to Be Wild which was originally supposed to be a ballad and they made it into a rocking tune. So can you imagine? I cannot imagine. I cannot imagine it as a ballad, but the more that I work with Greg and the more that I work with the band, the more I, I realize that nobody's first conception of what a song should be, should necessarily rule the day. I mean, for instance, if you listen to, the Temptations version of, you know, the original version, Ain't Too Proud to Beg, and then listen to the Stones cover. Uh, you sit back and you go, those are both unbelievable great songs. I never would have thought that the Temptations Motown R&B version could be done so phenomenally as a rock tune. So, you know, almost any song that's rooted in in a great melody could go in a thousand different directions and and i mean you, you make you have to make hard choices to in terms of where you want to end up you know it's very interesting that you say that um i want to shift gears this is completely unexpected but while you were saying that i've been working with a group playing their song called trope and the lead singer's name is diana and we've had some interviews with her and they covered tears of fears shout um, I heard it. I, I heard it. I know you, it. You heard the truth. I heard it on your. I think I heard it on your station. In yeah, fact. isn't it you great? Are. It's about, phenomenal. Let's that play, is a phenomenal cover. Let's play this video for people right now.
shout I'm talking to you shout I'm talking to you come on shout I'm talking to you shout I'm talking to you I'm talking to you, come on I got to tell you, Larry, that is just a phenomenal cover. I mean, they it made is. it their own. Yeah, no, it is. Absolutely. And, and in fact, I know I know for a fact I heard it on your station in the car, and that's exactly what I said. I, I went, that is a great cover. I need to get that song, and I need to introduce my daughter to that song because she's been listening to a lot of Tears for Fears recently, usually in the mornings as I'm driving her to school, and uh, she needs to hear that cover. What I'll do is we'll arrange a nice little, uh, we'll do a Zoom co call with uh, your daughter, my daughter, you and uh, Diana from. Uh, that'd be great. Trope, they, so they, they, have, talk. they have a lot more money to spend on videos than we do. I can um, tell you that too. Don't judge a book by its covers. These uh, these young people, they figured it out somehow. These young people, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, they are. I mean. No, know, they are. I know. I know. I, I, I often, I, I look at some of our younger people and I think to myself, damn it. I. I <laughs> why didn't I think of that? You know, it's just yeah, amazing. Yeah. Um, it, well, we, we actually have, we actually have a very, very cool low budget video coming out for since you've been gone, probably within the week. Is it almost as good as Jennifer Aniston? Very, very different. But I think uh, in terms of quality and watchability and holding your interest, I think it's as good as the Jennifer Aniston one. I will say this, the Virginia video is pretty good too, where you have that record player and it's spinning around. The, that was the first, video there's a full-blown video with live actors for virginia too that takes place on the streets of new york city all right that's awesome you're very creative larry i don't know where, where i, I can't think say, that you weren't creative i cannot take credit for the video ideas um you know we we use guys who produce videos for a living and i i green light a concept or i don't i can take credit for you know my lyrics and my yeah. melody and you know but videos are not my thing fair enough well, um, I'm really looking forward to delving into the album, playing the cuts on New HD and New HD LA. As you know, we pretty much play whatever the hell we want. Uh, we're a liberated radio station. We don't have to answer. You have a great, you have a great playlist. I, I've posted to my social media feeds trying to get my high school and college buddies to download your app. I don't know if any have, but I will encourage them again to do well, so. Well, shame on them if they haven't, because it's for a good cause, darn it. We're trying to create opportunities for people on the spectrum living with autism and various other disabilities. The technology is uh, outstanding. I, I call it low-cost, high-tech, Larry. That's uh, what we're using, and it's making it possible to change lives in so many levels. So if you're listening, if you're watching, please download the new HD radio app, the new HD LA radio app, and keep waiting and uh, keep paying attention because we're always going to be rolling out more. I've been curious on your app. It's it's cool, but also odd to get the English news. Because like you, I'm cool and odd at the same time. There you go. Uh, all right. There you go. Here's what I call it. The news of the future now. Because okay. they're, they're five hours ahead. 
and out in the West Coast, they're uh, eight hours ahead. So you know what's happening tomorrow, today. There you go. All so right. that's why. I do it. The other thing is, um, they're they're low cost. I mean, you know, I I have a budget to work with. Eventually, we're going to have our own. We all have we all have budgets to work with. We're, yeah. we're all we're going to have our own news source. But I really do um, love the English way of delivering the entertainment news and the news and even the sports is kind of it's interesting. It gives you. Some- hey, I could listen to them deliver sports news almost all day, whereas I have zero interest in in american sports talk radio i just i can't See, put guys at all i, I guess i'm on to something by doing that well, you Larry, may be. thanks for uh taking the time and being with us on the big fat american rock show are we separated at birth by any chance i mean Could've. Yeah. Could've. mom always both, liked you best we both have daughters i mean the parallels <laughs> in our lives are shocking we'll be back in a moment <laughs> 